What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the 31 Days of Horror. I am your host, Moon616, and thank you once again for stopping in, guys. Yes, 31 Days of Horror, Volume 8, Day 6, coming at you live and direct. All right, so we're going to take it all the way back to the glorious year of 1940, and uh, with a film starring one of my all-time favorite actors with uh, Boris Karloff. Now, I've talked extensively about his films in the past. I love Boris Karloff. I think he was a fantastic actor. And um, so I had to I had to do something from the 40s and I was like, you know what? Never reviewed this film before. Got to do this one from 1940. And it is a film called Before I Hang, which is on this Mill Creek multi-pack, but that's probably a better interpretation of the film. You get the original post art right there. But I came across this film set, which is pretty cool because I've been looking for The Devil Commands on Blu-ray and it was on here. And this one was also on Blu-ray, The Black Room. So I had multiple films that were kind of stuck in DVD and uh, we get them all here on Blu-ray. And I will say before, you know, like, I, I think it's on four discs. There's eight films on four discs. So each film, each disc has two films on it. So with that said, the transfer on the one I watched so far before I, before I hang is actually a really good transfer for the most part. There was one part in it where it dipped in quality. I'm not sure if that's the way that the, the transfer happens. Um, I'm not really too sure, but the whole thing looked really good. But anyways... I digress. 1940 film called Before I Hang with Boris Karloff. Quick little synopsis. Basically, Boris Karloff plays a doctor, and now he's on trial in the beginning of the film for mercy killings. Uh, what Boris Karloff was actually doing, he was trying to crack the code of age, the aging process. So he's trying to develop this serum to reverse the aging process, basically. Now, he's a doctor, of course. He's got patients. He's got this patient who's dying, like, really he explains it in this monologue in the beginning of the film that his patient was in so much pain he was dying and stuff Karloff thought he had this serum all worked out he injects his patient with it ultimately the patient dies he goes on trial for mercy killing and uh they don't just give him like life in prison they actually give him a death penalty they're gonna hang him and stuff like that so um, anyways, he's in jail now and not only is the uh, the warden really intrigued by his basically by his studies and stuff like that the the doctor inside the jail is really intrigued by you know his development of the serum and stuff like that so they ultimately let him continue along his studies and stuff like that so he ultimately cracks the code of it but he secretly injects himself with the serum anyways he like wakes up one day and he's like really fuck he's like a lot younger he's like 20 25 years younger and stuff like that but he has this epiphany um he basically, you know, he's like now, he had gotten pardoned just before this and stuff like that, but he, he got pardoned and now he's like, he has this epiphany. He's like, oh shit, like I'm going to spend the rest of my life in jail, but I'm reverse the aging process. So it's going to be a lot longer and stuff like that. But of course, when you, um, when you have something good like that happens or whatever, uh, you know, there's always there's always the bad that comes with it too. And ultimately what the serum does, it kind of creates this Jekyll and Hyde, this Jekyll and Hyde um, effect for him and stuff like that. And he becomes very violent and stuff like that. So anyways, he ends up getting a full pardon in, uh, in the film too, eventually. And uh, because something happens in the jail and he gets, he gets to, to go and live his life out in, in society. Um, so, my thoughts on this film, I really like the idea of this film. A lot of the movies in the 30s and 40s are like mad scientist type films and stuff like that. This is no this is no different, but what really sets this one off and makes it a little bit different is Boris Kar Karloff's um, performance of the film is fantastic. He's really good. The film opens up with him in court and he's given this monologue about life and death and and how he, you know, he's basically a murderer in the in the court size, you know, in the um in the law's eyes, but in reality, you know, he was just really trying to do something better for human, you know, for civilization and stuff like that. And I really like the monologue. He, he spits it out so damn good. Um, there's a lot of really quirky moments in the film too that, you know, kind of make this one really work. It's funny because after I was done watching this film, I really thought to myself, I was like, I really wanted to see the film where, you know, like he ultimately injects himself with the serum and creates, you know, the reverse effect of aging. But I would love to see in the film where he didn't get the pardon and he was actually in jail for, like, life. And it just goes on and on and on. Because in the film, you know, he's, like, in his 60s, right? So if you get a life sentence or whatever, like, if your death penalty is reduced out of life, you probably got, like, 20, 25 years, whatever. But if you're in jail for, like, an eternity, that would be a crazy film to, you know, like, it worked against him. So I thought that idea was kind of cool. But, but ultimately, you know, he ends up... Um, 
getting outside of jail and stuff like that. And of course, like I said, it becomes this Jekyll and Hyde thing, which has been something that was so prominent in the you know 20s, 30s, and 40s with these Jekyll and Hyde type films and stuff like that. But Boris Karloff plays it really good. Like, really, really good. Like, he can play that nice doctor character. He can play all sorts of characters. But when he goes evil in this man, he just gets this glow. He has his evil eyes, this evil look in his face. And it ultimately works so well. He's really good as like that badass killer kind of dude and stuff like that. I think it's pretty cool. Um, there's a few kills here and there. It's 1940. You're not going to get a lot of blood and gore and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's a very typical like type film, you know, like I said, mad scientist type thing. But the thing that's funny about this film, it runs like an hour. Now, yesterday I reviewed a film that ran an hour. That was not planned at all because like I said, all this thing was totally done by the randomizer. I'm like, what are the chances of two films running an hour back to back? So random. It really is random. Um, but you know, the short and long of it, really, man, it's a good film. I really enjoy these type of films. It's right to the point. It doesn't fuck around. There's there's not a lot of narrative when it comes to, like, character development, all those type of things. Like, characters, like, oh, here's my daughter. You know, here's this. We all know about, you know, filmmaking back in the 30s and 40s. It was short to the point. Kind of sweet. But, you know... Honestly, I really recommend this film. It's uh, it's very, very solid for, for the time. In fact, like a lot of the films on the set, they, they pick some good-ass films on here, like The Man They Couldn't Hang, The Black Room, The Devil Commands, Before I Hang. Um, it's a lot of good Boris Karloff films on this set, so... You know, it's thrillers, the Vault 8 films kind of thing. If you guys are interested in that, that's where I'm reviewing this one, so... Um, but yeah, so I'm going to come in at about a 7.5 on this one. It's It's a short film. It's a short film. And it does what it's supposed to do, so I can't really complain. But yeah, so that is uh, Before I Hang from 1940, starring the infamous and awesome Boris Karloff. Transfer is amazing. Um, these things are all bare bones and stuff like that, so you're not going to really get anything. But um, yeah, awesome. I was so happy to finally see that one. Uh, in, a, in a really good transfer. I seen, I saw that film years and years ago, but it looked like crap. It really did, like a lot of the Karloff films that I grew up watching and stuff, they just had terrible transfers. It's amazing, like even Mill Creek, you don't really think as Mill Creek is doing these really good transfers on these films and stuff, but from what I've seen, what they've done with some of these movies, I'm like, shit, dude, that's a really good transfer, so can't really complain, but yeah. Before I hang from 1940, that's gonna conclude day six here on the 31 Days of Horror Volume 8. I'll be back tomorrow with day seven, and as usual, dudes,